So we're going to begin our paper piecing with bag J1. This is mosaic star of the Stella Maris round one. And we're going to go through this every step as it states in the directions. So we've grabbed our bag J1. I'm going to pull everything out. And again, I've got my eight foundation units. I've got a template for section one. And I've got a template layout sheet for sections two and three. Okay? So in this layout, we actually have, and you can see that here, we've actually alternated colors. You don't have to do that, but we have two J1 colors because we're alternating those. So instead of having one strip of fabric, we have two. And with my labels that I created from my Quiltster printout, I've got one 10 inch strip J1 and a second 10 inch strip from J1. Now you are going to have a little bit more waste because you're using if you'd used one, we could have gotten all eight pieces out of this, but we're using two. But you can stack these two pieces. So we're going to stack those and treat those just like one piece. Although here in this graphic, you see eight pieces. We're only going to need to do it four times means we've got it stacked. Okay, so fabric J1, template J1, we're going to use a repositionable glue placed on the back side of this. And I like to get it towards the edges. Now a trick with this glue, if you push too hard, you're going to get a little bit of debris on there, which can stick on your quilt. It'll brush off, but I like to use that. And then I like to give it just a second or two to dry. And then we're going to lay that out and just like it shows. Now we want to make sure that we're always using these to what is indicated in the directions and on this paper. It says stack fabrics right side up which we do have them both stacked right side up. I want to make sure I'm not going to cut into that salvage. All right. And I'm going to cut these out. Now these don't have to be perfectly on the line because it is a template layout. So we can see here by the dashed lines this is what, how much of this piece is actually going to be used once it's trimmed away. So we don't need to spend a whole lot of time by making that perfect. I'm just going to cut to that point. Again, you do want to be aware of how it's shown to lay it out because that's how it's designed for the grain of the, the fabric. I'm going to take that off and lay it on here. Cut my next two. We can stack those. This is not, again, this is not precision piecing. 
We don't need to take those little guys off. That's all going to happen in the paper piecing process. Snack those so we have four done. A lot of times I'll see students pressing out every single wrinkle. Unless it's really severe to where you're actually losing some yardage with that. Again, because this is not precision cutting at this point, those wrinkles are going to come out in the wash the first time we add our next unit. I like to tell my students, I'm going to unteach every good quilting habit you ever had. We're going to stack fabrics. We're going to cut a lot of layers. We're not going to do precision cutting. And yet with this technique, we're going to get much more precise quilting than we do in traditional piecing. We have six. We're going to cut our last two. We have eight cut out in two different colorways. So there's our first stack. And that is section one. And now we're going to go on to sections two and three. So fabric J2 is template layout sheet number one. Cut one six and three quarter by 42 inch strip, which with our quilt works set up, we already had done. We have the template layout sheet. It's labeled so I know that I've got the correct six and three quarters, everything matches. All right, so this shows your graphic exactly how this is gonna lay out. And a good rule of thumb, if your piece doesn't fit on that piece that you've cut, you may have the wrong piece, you may, you may have the wrong unit, or you may have cut something wrong. So the fact that this lays just perfectly is another good indication. This tells me template layout sheet number one, template layout sheet number one, six and three quarters by 42 inch, stack fabrics right side up. So I have, I have four pieces here, okay? So I'm gonna actually put my repositionable glue behind those four pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so this graph shows how that's gonna lay out. The next page, the next graph over, this is going to show you how many times you're going to need to do that. One, two, three, four. Now we need eight sets, but if you look, this has two section threes and two section twos. So you're cutting two sets out at the same time. Now I don't need to cut this perfectly, but I want to keep it pretty tight because I want to make sure I'm not going to run out of room on my strip and we all know that not all fabrics are measured the same so I like to be as careful as I can. I'm going to stack that now if you feel more comfortable you can take a pin through each layer. That paper is going to stay on that top piece simply because you've got that uh, repositionable glue. And I'm just going to keep stacking. I've cut two. I'm going to cut three. And I'm going to cut my fourth and last unit. All right. 
so now we have everything we need. This little crosshatch might be hard to read, but it says scrap in here. So that's going to get thrown away. I'm going to put a pin right in that scrap away from my cutting lines. And we'll talk about our cutting lines here. And I'm also going to put a pin in each separate unit. There's one set of section threes. There's one set of four of section twos. My second set of section twos. And my second set of section threes. All right. So as we start to cut these apart, you want to be very aware. We've always, we're always given cut line one, cut line two, cut line three, and cut line four. Now you really need to be careful and aware of these. When we do cut line two, we got to make sure that we don't cut into line three. Most of the time it naturally happens, but on some of these we have to be very careful not to cut into the next section. So here's our cut line one, solid line. Do that curve nice and slow. Okay, so our next cut line is cut line two. But cut line three comes through here, so a little trick we like to teach. I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut the first few inches of cut line three. And then I'm going to come back, and I can even paper clip this out of my way. Now I can comfortably, I don't have to try to stop right at the exact point. Now I can come through cut line two and cut right through there. All right. I can take that paper clip out and I can finish cutting line three. Again, my crosshatch says scrap. I can get rid of that. And now I can cut line four. All right. So now I have two stacks of four of section two. I'm just going to take those and combine them. I don't even need that. I can get rid of one of those. And I'm going to put a paper clip. Now we talked about the cut line. There's also a side that will say sew side. All right. I like to put my paper clip on the sew side. And the reason why will become apparent in our next demo. Combine my two stacks of section three. Get rid of one of those. Stack those together. My sew side. So now I have everything cut. Section one, section two, and section three. Now, this isn't the best example of it because it's pretty simple with three, but I still am going to use our stacking technique, okay? Because stacking is always going to keep these in order. So I'm going to stack. My section three is my last section, and my section two, and then my section one I'm going to place on top. We're going to put these back. Let's cut 
all of the J's. So that's going to move us to bag J2. Okay. So there's my eight sewing foundation templates. Now this is a little bit different. And this happens fairly often. And it's simply to save us fabric. They were able to design this where this, this template layout sheet actually cuts at the same time you'll be cutting your J2 and J3. So your J2 is going to go into bag 2 and your J3 is going to go into bag 3. Again, the instructions are going to walk you through that. Okay. So, a fabric J3, which we have indicated by our little quiltster strip, we should have one 16 and a half inch strip. Here's our graphic on how we're going to start this guy. Okay. Nice big strip. So there's our strip laid out. And here again, you can see how this fits in here really nicely. Okay, that's going to show you how to set up that first piece. So I'm going to put a couple pieces behind two and a couple pieces behind three. You want to get as close to that salvage as possible because if you look at this graphic, we're going to use this full piece. So we don't want to run out. So we're going to be a little bit more careful about cutting than we were. I'm going to move this aside, seeing that we have such a big piece. Okay. So I'm going to get that right up against on that line. There's one. Now that graphic will show you what your next step we need to turn that. I'm going to turn this and I'm going to cut this guy right on that line because I want to be able to bump it up to the next one. And this is scrap. Lay that back out. And we're just going to alternate that, putting that on that line. And as you cut one line, you're going to be cutting to the next line for the next piece. four pieces. Another option we can do is that's getting a little thick. 
we can set these four aside. Reposition with that repositionable glue again. Then we're dealing with a little less fabric to work with. One. We do recommend flower pins, especially in instances like this. That's going to lay nice and flat so we can lay our ruler over without having any, any issues. And four, which is actually eight, seems we did it twice. This is all scrap. I got those a little unstacked, so I'm going to line those up again. I'm going to place those eight together. Another thing you can do, I'm going to put a paper clip in there, and a paper clip in here, and now I'm going to cut this apart, cut line one, and that's going to give my J2 and J3. So now we've just cut 16 pieces, eight units for J2 and eight units for J3. Next, it tells you you're going to put the J2 into bag two and the J3. Into bag three. Let me set up our next uh, demo and we'll be right back. Okay, our last fabric cutting for the J units is fabric J4. And it may be in bag three or bag four, bag two or bag three, simply because they're going to both be used just like the last one. We're gonna divide them, then put them into the appropriate bags. So we have unit J2 and J3, template layout, sheet three. And we can look at our units, section three, section two, section two. And here's our J4, we need four two and a half inch strips. Stack fabrics right side up. And we're going to stack all four of these units. Strips, I mean, not units.
Okay, again, I'm going to get my repositionable glue. And I'm going to put a little strip behind each section. Our graphic is going to show us the four strips lined up. And we're going to have a little scrap on this guy, but we still want to use as much possible. Now I don't have that trimmed as close as I could, which isn't as important on the uh, template layout sheets, but you can see I have a little overlap, but the lines are lined up to that two and a half inch strip so that I know again that I'm using the correct one. salvage off. Now we're cutting four. We want to be pretty careful about lining those up. These tiny little pieces, we're going to be cutting right down the middle of that. So I'm going to paper clip these again. I'm going to have to kind of put that at an angle. That's the last four. So we have our eight sections cut. I'm just going to put paper clips on this one side. That ruler's not long enough. And that one side's going to be enough to hold those in place while I cut right down the middle of this, which is cut line one. I have to get a little elbow grease into that one, cutting through eight layers. So section two for unit J3 is going to go into bag three. Cut line two. Section three for J3. And section two for J2. So now we have cut J1, J2, and J3. Now we're ready to start our paper piecing and with this demo you're actually going to right off the bat get to see what we call a vein technique or curved paper piecing and there's a little bit this is a little bit different from your typical paper piecing so it's a great demonstration and we'll get ready to do that. Okay, so we have all of our J bags cut, prepared, and ready to go. I'm going to grab bag number J1. I have my foundation units, and I have section 1, and section 2, and section 3. Now, for the purposes of today's video, we're going to make four of these units. Now, when we cut these, we did these stacked. And I'm going to leave them in that configuration and it doesn't really matter which order because these are all the same color but I'm going to leave them a blue purple blue purple
I'm going to move. Actually, that was silly. I didn't need to do that. We'll save those. Okay. So our first step that we're going to do with this is the same as any other any other first step in paper piecing. Okay. We're going to grab our Yoohoo. That's our glue stick, which is fabric to paper. I've seen people try to use these. First of all, these are very expensive and you have to use a lot of it because this doesn't stick well with paper to fabric. These are a lot less inexpensive, so we like using that. So the first step in section number one, which we don't do with any other section, we flip that over and then we're going to attach this to the back side. Now, the section that we're covering is this section, but it's not just the white section. We need to reference this dashed line because that is actually going to end up being our seam allowance. So you always need to go past the sew line to the dashed line. Now we have plenty of room on this one. So by just centering this unit, we're going to have plenty of, plenty of space. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to lightly put some glue on that. So I want to make sure that's going to stay in place. I want to make sure all of my edges have a little bit of fabric. Okay. Turn the next piece over. Now, if I were to place this down here, I'm not going to have enough to cover my seam allowances. So I want to make sure the dashed line Remember how I said it was really important to use that eighth of an inch? If you had a half an inch hanging off here, you wouldn't be able to see where your placement was going to be. So trimming those is really important. Put a little bit of glue. Do my next piece. Now also, I want you to be aware of where you're putting this glue. Make sure you're not getting into that section two or three, because that'll make it a little bit more difficult when you go to tear your papers. Line that up. And my fourth and last piece. Now normally, I would do all eight pieces, because we do, with this process, we chain piece everything. Everything we're gonna do, typically eight times, because we have eight units. But to save some time today, I'm just going to do four so you have enough to see what, what we're doing, but save us a little bit of time. So I'm going to set those aside. Okay. Now normally, with paper piecing, we would come in and we would stack the second piece on. This is curved paper piecing. So this is a complete different beast. I have my sewing machine set up. And I've set this on a basting stitch. Now, we're calling it a basting stitch. It's about a 2.2 to 2.5. And really, with this, you technically don't need to um, change it too much because it's all going to get trimmed off eventually anyways. But what we're going to do is we're going to, and it's numbered here, we're going to do a basting stitch on this line one. Okay, and we're just going to go up to this point. When we turn this over, we're going to have a nice little guide here that's going to help us place our next piece. So let's put our basting stitch on all four of these units. Now you do want to be pretty accurate, very accurate with this. This basting stitch is technically going on your seam allowance, which is going to get trimmed off at another time. I'm just going to pull that. OK, 
continue on. Be my next. Did I move my scissors? I think I did. I'm gonna pop these apart with the seam ripper. Okay. Now when I turn those over, you can see what I mean by having a reference line. Okay. All right. We have that. We are going to turn this over. Now in this demo, she actually, we do this a couple different ways. So I'm going to follow the directions in this unit. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to fold this paper back. You can see here, she shows in the, dem in the graphic, we're going to fold that back and as close as we can to that stitch line without cutting the paper, we're going to trim that excess off. So this is comparable to what we would normally do with our folding template and our add a quarter, but we can't do that because it's a curved seam. All right. So we can see our next section two and what we have to cover. So I'm going to take my section two. You can always look at your section two and see this is actually a reverse graphic of this, but you can see how that's going to go on to that piece. So let's take four pieces off of this guy. One, two, three, four. Now, it's very easy to get this confused and sew this on this way. That's not how you're going to do it. Your first cue is this is your sew side and it tells us this, okay? So when we're doing curved piecing, you're going to take your frowny face to your smiley face. I know that sounds silly, but do you see that? You've got your frowny face to your smiley face. But what we're going to do is we're going to glue this guy right on that edge and that's where we're going to use our fabric glue pen and we want to make sure that that placement is going to cover. If we drop this too low, when we come back here we're going to lose something. So you want to play with that a little bit. Make sure when you flip that over that's going to cover. Okay? So you can, once you line that up, put a little pin in there if you want. I'm going to take my fabric glue pen and very carefully, because I want to keep this glue in my quarter inch seam allowance. Now if you get a little outside, it's fine. I mean try not to because it's one less step you'll have to deal with. You can always take a little, this is all water soluble. You can always take a little wet sponge and wipe that off if that pops out of your seam. Okay, I'm going to sew that half. 
I'm going to flip that again just to make sure I'm going to cover that piece that I'm adding to. I'm going to take my pin out and I'm going to come and do the other side. By starting in the middle, you're going to be able to uh, work with half of the piece at a time and your glue's not going to dry out. If you're comfortable with it, feel free to glue that whole section at the same time. I'll do that on the next piece. Okay. Now I can see when I've, after I stitch that and press that, look how beautiful that looks. Now, these are, because of those template layout sheets, these are all cut on bias, and it's all the correct bias. But you do have to be careful. Don't get too crazy with stretching and pulling. Because they're cut properly, you just need to kind of pat those down. You're not working anything in, and you're not pulling it. Got my next piece. Now see how I'm just kind of setting that, I'm guiding that with my fingers, I'm not pulling it. You start pulling that too much, and you're really going to distort that piece. And when you trim it and go to try to put it into the quilt, when we're doing the quilt construction, you're going you're gonna to be fighting it. Okay, so now... We have a couple different ways that we do this. And these instructions show stitching it <clears throat> from this side. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to adjust my stitch length down to 1.8. What that does is that makes it easier, a lot easier, to remove your um, remove your papers. It kind of perforates that and it also gives it a nice secure, um, nice secure stitch. So when we sew from this side, we're using that stitch line and that's why it's important to trim that right on that edge because that is going to be our quarter inch guide. Okay. So I'm going to ride that edge right on my quarter inch line, right on the edge of my quarter inch foot. Now this is, like any curved paper piecing, or curved piecing, we're getting a little bit of gathering, and this is where the purple thing comes in handy. I can work those in before I start getting a pleat back here. So do a few stitches, work that in. If I'm not working that in, when I get to this line, I'm going to end up with a really big pleat and pucker at the end. Okay, so now I've got that stitched. When I pull that back, I can press that and look at that perfect smooth line. Now I'm going to show you another way that we've been doing this. And we find we've been getting a little bit more accurate with the stitching. You just have to be very careful of your fullness underneath. But there's a couple tricks we've learned. So I'm going to start stitching this on this other side. And I'm just going to really be aware of any puckering or anything. But what kind of happens naturally is the feed dogs pick that up. And I can pick that, pick that up and make sure that's working in. This way, we're getting a little bit more accurate 
on that sew line. So the basting stitch was line one. This is sew line two. I want to look at that. I don't have any puckers in that. I'm going to lay that back. There again. Nice, beautiful seam line. check for any puckers or pleats. Looks good. Okay, I'm going to get our ironing station ready. We'll be right back to continue this demo. Okay, so we've attached section two to section one with our curved paper piecing. And now we're going to take these over to the ironing station and press that open. And this is where we're going to use our acorn um, easy press pen. Especially on these curved paper pieces. Now I don't use this on all of my seams, but when you're working with something, you're turning it back and you're working with some bias. This little guy is refillable and it's it has a, a starch, lightly starch based product in there. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put that right on the seam line. And a little goes a long way. I'm going to press that open. Again, I talked about this earlier. It's really important to get that seam all the way open and pressed completely open. What happens often with paper piecing and any kind of quilting, if we don't get those seams pressed all the way open, and it is more difficult on curved piecing, we get a little bit of uh, we'll get a little bit of fold in there, and we don't know it until we take our our paper off, and then that uh, that block becomes bigger and it completely distorts the shape and size of our block, and that's when we get very full quilts in the center, or very wavy borders. So this tool, I'm going to kind of finger press that first, really get that open. Now I use this for a couple times before I need to, but once that starts to get a little dry, I'll do that on the next one. You just give that little tip a little push. I want to press that open, but I do want to be careful not to distort that also. So I'm going to give this just a little bit of a push, and that's going to fill that tip again. Finger press that open. Might even do a little steam on that where that wrinkled. All right. So now we can look at our pieces and we can make sure that the piece we just added completely covers that section two. We can check that on all the pieces. I can even look from the front side of it and not see any paper there. Make sure everything looks good. Looks good. Okay. So we are going to do the same exact technique that we just did. We're going to change to our basting stitch. Again, this is why we like to do eight pieces, eight pieces, and you're not changing your machine 
64 different times. You're changing it, you know, eight times. Now, the one thing we need to be aware of, and this also happens with anytime you have an intersecting point, we need to pull this paper back just a little bit. And we need to pull that back just past this sew line. Because what we need to do is when we sew, we need to be able to pull that back so we can attach the next piece. So I'm going to do that with these pieces. I'm just going to pull that back. This will happen when anytime we've got points, like in our New York Beauties, anytime you're sewing over one line to the next, that crisscross, you got to just pull that back a little bit. All right, so I've changed my stitch length. And now I'm going to be stitching on basting line stitch three. Again, that's not the third basting stitch. It's just the third stitch line, which happens to be a baste. Now we're going to follow that all the way to the end. The other one we stopped here, this continues all the way to the end. We have the same exact situation as we did before. Now we can come in here, fold that paper back, and cut as close to that stitch line as I can without cutting the paper. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit different technique. Instead of folding this paper back, we're going to actually leave that on there. So we only have to trim this once later on. There's just a second step that we have to be really aware of and be careful of. But I wanted to show you two this way. And now I'm going to show you these two. So we're, what we're doing differently is we're not going to fold the paper back and trim this yet. We're going to trim that at the end. So we're still going to use our basting lines. And I'm going to actually attach all four of these at the same time. One, two, three. Leave that there for my reference. Okay, we've got the sew side. All right. So this is going to end up like this. So this is how we're going to attach it. Okay. 
So I'm going to use that based in as a guide. Nice solid line of glue within the seam allowance. Give the lot a little test clip. Make sure that's going to cover everything. It is. All right, now these are the two that I actually trimmed. Now I had that paper tear a little on me because I went a little too far. So I'm going to grab a little piece of tape. Maybe I'll do that later. But if you feel that's going to be difficult to work with, you can always just pop a little pe tiny piece of tape on this back side to secure that. It shouldn't be a problem, but that's what that tape is good for. All right. I am going to press this a little bit just to make that curved piecing a little simpler. Find my placement. So this looks differently because we did pre trim that. Check my positioning. Glue within that quarter inch seam allowance. Again, if you're more comfortable doing half and half, you can put a little pin in the center. Glue one side, then glue the other. When you first start working with that glue, it might be easiest to do it that way. Placement looks good. All right. So again, just like in the first demo, we can sew this from this side using that stitch line as a guide, or we can sew from this side. You know, everyone seems to prefer one way or the other, and everyone seems to do better one way or the other. So whichever works best for you, you're really going to get whatever gives you the best result is how you want to do it. I need to drop my stitch length again now because I'm back to paper piecing. So I'm going to drop that to 1.8. Another little trick I like to do, I like to start that stitch. Don't feel you have to start right at that point. We're going to be trimming this off. So, you know, you can trim that, those last few stitches off kind of gives you a good start. So I like to start just two to four stitches behind that line. Just 
stitch right on line four. I'm gonna check my placement. These are such gradual curves that they really stitch beautifully. Pull that out. Check for any puckers. And we're going to trim this off a little later. So don't worry about that. And one thing we want to be very aware, especially with this very light fabric, if you look closely, especially after you take the paper off, and you get a nice white batting behind there. If you don't trim that off, you're going to get a little purple shadow behind this. So we want to be we want to be careful about that. And I'm going to show you, you know, how to do that. A lot of people are probably going, oh no, but we'll we'll take care of that here in a little bit. So let's finish this. All right. Let's cut the rest of these apart. I'm going to check and make sure I don't have any pleats or puckers. Looks good. Cut my little tails off there. All right. I can pull those back before I trim. Make sure my next section is covered. Just checking my placement. Looks good. All right. So we're going to press these. Make sure my iron's ready to go. I forgot my little easy press pen. I think the biggest mistake that I see in my classes is people rushing their pressing. Pressing is so important for accurate piecing in any quilting and even more so in paper piecing so that we don't get a distorted block size after removing that paper. You do all this precision beautiful work and then we can completely ruin it by rushing our, our pressing. That pen gives us such a nice, beautiful, flat, smooth seam. And as a long arm quilter, we love flat smooth seams. It makes for easier quilting, and it makes for better quilting on your quilts. All right. Take these back to our cutting table. Now I'm gonna make sure I have my other four pieces back into my J bag so I can continue making those at another time. All right. So I'm going to pull the two pieces out that we have pre-trimmed. And these are the two pieces that we're going to do a little bit different technique on. So now we're to the point where we're actually going to um, add our TRP lines because you don't have the luxury of lining up two 
four inch blocks. You have a curve. So you, it's really difficult to find that. So those registration points will really come in handy. Oh, nope, it's this guy. So you'll end up having re matching registration points on several different units. So I'm going to, this is really important because it's really difficult to take these registration points out if you've stitched them in at 1.8 or 1.5. Some people do a smaller stitch. Now, I like to stitch from the center out because when I stitch from the center out, it will leave a little tail, which will help when I go to pull those later. And the edge doesn't matter here because we're going to trim those off, which will also help with that tail to pull those out. So I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my registrations on all of these. Again, I would normally be doing eight, but I'm going to do it on all four. Now, sewing accurately on these is very important. We like to do about a 2.2 or 2.3, not a true three to four um, basting stitch. If they're too big, when you pull the papers, you can lose that. You can pull that out. But at 2.2, 2.3, that still is going to come out um, relatively easy. So I'm going to stitch that. And I'm actually going to snip each one of these to make it a little bit neater. Oh, I can't actually do that. You know what? I'm going to have to show my next step on the other two. That's one of those that we have to finish trimming. So let me finish this one. Now this is the pre-trimmed one. I can't do the registration points on the others quite yet. I'll be sewing all this excess in. So we want to take those off. So we're going to do that step next. So we have all this excess here. So what we're going to do And I'm going to use a ruler on all my straight edges just because it makes it easier and cleaner. We can't do it on the curved. We do have our curved um, ruler, which we can use, and we'll play with that next a little bit. Another thing I want to talk about when we're trimming these is our smart corners. Now, these are touched on in our introduction um, booklet, but if you look, Instead of trimming this curve and trimming this curve and ending up with a point, and then trying to figure out where those line up, they've added the design element of smart corners. So you want to be really accurate on these corners that take that off, okay? Now what these smart corners are going to do, when we go to sew that in when we're constructing the quilt, You've got a smart, a smart corner on every piece, and those literally line up exactly how they're supposed to line up. You're going to see that as we start constructing pieces later on, but we really want to emphasize that now on why those are there and why cutting them accurately is so important. So I am going to cut all of my straight edges here. A lot of times our, our students find that it's very difficult to line the edge of your ruler up perfectly on that line. Do you cut inside the line, cut outside the line? Technically, you're going to be cutting right down the middle of that line. But if you use a ruler on those, see on my ruler I have this quarter inch dashed line. If I line that up on my quarter inch, and that's what this second line is. If I line that up on my quarter inch, which is really easy to see, you can see moving it there. I don't even have to worry about where my outside line is because I know I'm adding a perfect quarter inch when I cut that off. Now when I move that, look at how perfect that is. Now I'm going to cut my smart corner on this side, and I'm going to cut my 
my smart corner on this side. I'm going to line my quarter inch. And be really careful when trimming these because if you cut on the quarter inch, you've cut off your seam allowance and you're going to be completely resewing your entire unit. And there's either going to be a lot of tape involved or ordering some extra foundation units. Okay, so we have the curved diamond trimming rule, ruler, cutting and trimming ruler. If you look at this ruler, it's a little bit more arced on one side than the other, and we can also use the inside. So what this is made to do is find that, find the arc that really best lines up with this unit. Now we can't always find that, and there's a technique we use you know, to do it differently. This one isn't quite going to line up with this, but we can, we can start it out. We can find the point of that. There we go. That starts it. And I can go a little ways, then I can kind of readjust that, line that up. There's usually a spot in this ruler that will line up with that. And make that cutting a little more accurate. Also, you can just come in here the old fashioned way and cut on that line. Now, that second way that I showed you, I am cutting through a few more layers. Okay. But when I turn that over, look at that beautiful piece. Now, when I trim the pieces that I turned the paper back on, your piece is going to essentially be done at this point. So this is where this one differs. Differs. So we have everything finished. You have to be really careful that you're not going to cut off the piece that you just sewed on. And you have to make sure that you've trimmed all of your outer perimeter before you do this next step. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll this back and now I'm going to use that basting stitch as a cutting guide. And there we go. Now you've cut that paper off, but because you cut that previously, you don't need that paper. Okay, so that's a second way. I'm going to do that technique again with this, and then we're going to show you the, the technique where we actually rolled the paper back. So I'm going to do this a little bit faster than I did last time. Call my straight edges. And my smart corners. Lining that quarter inch up with my quarter inch seam allowance so I get it. Nice cut right down the middle. I'm going to cut my smart corner straight edge at the top here. I'm going to do my curves. All right. So 
so I have my unit finished but I still have this bulk in here so I'm not cutting that off. I'm going to roll that back trim that off. And there's one more little thing in here I want to show you. And these little curved scissors work beautifully. This little point right here is just bulk. So we like to come in and don't go right to the seam, but get pretty close, about a stitch away. That's going to save, it, it's, that's going to press a lot easier and it's going to save a lot of bulk when you go to sew that into when you're constructing these units, especially on those, these curved pieces. So I'm going to come in here, do the same thing, fold that back, and cut that little off, that little die off. All right. So now we were able to do the basting stitch on these guys. We couldn't do, or the registration basting, we couldn't do that before because we had that bulk in here. So this is where we find there's pluses and minuses for each technique. So you really need to find which way works best for you. But I can see here with that um, first technique, I've actually taken off just a little bit of that registration point, but there's enough on there that I can follow. And I'm actually going to use just a little bit of a pencil here, excuse me. I can just lightly draw that to make sure I have, normally I would use a marking pen or, but make sure I'm set at that basting length. And finish that basting registration point. Now what I do want to do with this, is I want to clip these little guys because we want to be able to pull this later. And if you don't pull those, that's going to make it really tough after it's sewn into a seam. Most of you can probably stitch because that gives you a little over an inch to start stitch a straight line from that. So you don't even necessarily have to mark that. I'm going to snip that edge. That's a little long. So those two are completely ready. Now I'm going to finish trimming these just like I did those. And then there's one little correction that we have to make. And that's to make sure we don't have any dark shadow from that dark print on the other side. So you don't always have to necessarily worry about that, but because we have a dark fabric reaching into your light fabric with the seam allowance, you want to be really careful of that. Smart corners. Smart corner. Do a straight edge. Also be aware on some of these units, it may look like a straight edge, but if you line your ruler up, there's often a tiny bit of a curve. So be, be aware if that's gonna go into, you know, a curve or not. These are straight, but if they look like they might not be straight, they probably aren't, so don't straighten them. There's my smart corner on that. Now this is where I'm trimming off that basting edge with my rotary cutter, okay? So we did the pre-trimming before. 
but this is where we want to come back, pull that back, and you can see that little bit of that lip there. So I tend to prefer this way because I have to come back and trim this off anyways. So I'd prefer not to fold that paper back and not to have to do this a second time. Another little trick, sometimes instead of grabbing the scissors, I'll just come in and nip off that with my rotary cutter when I'm cutting that. Now that unit's done. So like I said, you can see advantages and disadvantages either way. Yes, a little too much on that smart corner. I saw a little white there, so I went back and took that off. Pull that piece back. So I can come in and trim off any shadow, which I don't have any on that side. There's a little on this side. Make sure I'm not going to take a little nick out of the strip I just sewed on and take off my little dog ear there and there we go so now we have half of our center units and you can see those here looks a little wider because it has the seam allowance on it still, but that is your J1 bag. Okay, we just finished um, bag J1. Now we're on to bag J2. This is very straightforward, basic, easy paper piecing. We're going to do one unit of the J2, and we're going to do one unit of the J3, and then we'll be able to construct the entire J unit. Um, so I'm going to, I pulled out one foundation paper of the J2, and I've got one section one and one section two. Okay. Put that to the side. So the first thing we do with section one always is we flip that over. Now, if you, they leave these graphics on these pa papers for a reason. Now we have to imagine that this is flipped over, but you can see how this will fit on here. <clears throat> so we can fit that on just like that, okay? And we're gonna trim all this off, but we're going to use our glue stick and we're going to glue just behind section one. I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to get glue into section two. Normally I would glue all eight pieces. Okay. I'm going to put the rest back in my bag. So if you decide to do one or two to just 
get a feel for things, always put that back in the bag. That's going to really help you keep organized. Okay, now, this is more traditional. This is traditional paper piecing that we do. Once you learn this process, you're going to do the same thing over and over. Um, the curved, we taught you the hard stuff first on this one. Okay, now on this we have line one. Okay, the sew line, again, like our curved piecing, is the solid line. The line one is the solid line. Now that is where we always want to put our fold template. Okay, now some people get confused about which side this goes on. You always want to see that dashed line, which is your reference line for your seam allowance. Okay, so I want to be able to see that seam allowance on this side. So I've got my fold template on the solid line. And this is where I'm going to add my quarter inch seam allowance. These, these add a quarter rulers have a little lip and that's why we need that template right there, that fold template. We can get that right in there. Nice clean line. Okay. Like I said, normally I would do all eight pieces. I would glue all eight pieces. Then I would trim all eight pieces. But on this occasion, we're going to get after this and get it done. So I'm going to use this as a reference. I've got my sew side here. Okay. So I know that cut edge that I just trimmed is going to be my sew side. Okay. Now I can look at this and this piece is nice and big, but I can see this folded back piece just needs to be covered by this purple piece that I'm adding, this section number two. Okay. So I can see that that's safely going to be covered on all ends. Okay. Now, oftentimes we get a long skinny tail and sometimes it's necessary. After I get that lined up, I'm just going to set that back just a little bit. I'm going to get my fabric to fabric glue pen. And this is where I don't really need a solid line, like if I'm doing curved piecing, just a few little pieces and bump that right back over, get that right flush on that edge, make sure I haven't dropped that down. Okay. Again, I would glue all eight pieces. I'm going to come back to my machine, make sure I'm at a 1.8 stitch for my paper piecing. Now, because I glued that, which isn't entirely necessary, it's nice and secure, especially if you're doing all eight pieces. You know, you can move them easily. Some people have to move from station to table to where they, you know, so a little glue can help. Otherwise, you don't necessarily have to do that for these smaller pieces. Okay, now, the same solid line that I placed my fold template on is my sew line. I'm going to start just a few stitches back. And I'm going to stitch very precisely on that solid line. And if you notice, the right edge of my um, presser foot, of my quarter inch presser foot, is riding that dashed line. And guess what? That's my perfect quarter inch seam allowance. I go a couple stitches past and I could continue to chain piece that and cut those apart. Now I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to open that okay. up. Now you can see I've got that beautiful, nice, perfect seam. Everything's covered. I don't have any paper hanging out. If you turn that over and you see some paper, you quite possibly drop this too low or too high and might have something a little bit, you know, missing. Same thing, you might have had this, you know, below. So before you trim all this, make sure that everything's covered because now's the time to tear this out and fix that. If you trim everything 
and then you notice a hole missing, then you're starting from scratch. Okay, let me get my ruler, just like on our J1s, I'm going to do my straight edges. I'm going to line my quarter inch up on my ruler with my quarter inch on my piece. Now this is a little funky corner. That's actually a smart corner. And that actually looks like it has a little bit of a curve to it, so I don't want to use my straight ruler on that. When I lined that up, I could tell there was a little bit of an arc to that. So don't, don't just whack that off. Cut my smart corner on the top. Finish my straight edge over here. And I'm going to come in and do my curve. Now this is an inside curve, which this little guy line that up, adjust that just a little, adjust that just a little. There we go. So we have a J2 unit. And I have J3 all set up, so I'm going to just do one unit on that and go right into that demo. Now this one has three pieces, so I'm going to be able to demo stacking a little bit more. With the two pieces, it's a little bit you don't really see the benefit of it. So I have my one J3 foundation. There's section one. Oh, I just threw my, <laughs> I just threw my section two in my two bag. I thought I left the other one out. That's section two, section three. There it is. get one off there. Okay, so normally I would start from the highest number. Okay, we have three pieces, so I want section number three. I'm going to stack that so side up. I have section number two, and I'm going to stack that so side up. And I like to put that paper clip on the top, then I can see they're all so sides up. And section one, it's just going to get laid on top. So, what do we do with the first piece? We flip that over, find section one on this unit, which is this center piece. Okay. It's nice and big, but look here. If I really give myself a little extra here, I'm going to shy myself here. So you can see, I may need to bring this up. And these, these are where these strips are going to go on. I only have to have this cover piece, this back piece, the cover to these lines. So I'm going to bump that up and make sure but I'm not going to leave this hanging out. If I were to put that there, I'm going to get that sewn together, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to be missing a little bit here. Okay? So line that up. Find your placement. Give yourself a good idea. Another nice advantage of doing all eight pieces, you spend the time doing section the first piece, and then you just have to do the other seven the identical way. So it saves you time. It really does. I'm going to flip that over. 
I'm going to put a little bit of glue just behind section one. I'm going to turn that over, being aware of that placement, making sure my seam allowance is covered. Okay. Now, line one is on the right side this time, or correct side. I'm going to put my full template on line one, on the solid line. So I'm going to fold that back. Add a quarter. Now, you need a little bit longer than 12 inches here, but, and we do have 18 inches. They do make the 18 inch, but for 95% of this quilt, you don't need this. So I just like to slide this, which is easy to do. So if we place this fold template right in the center of that, I can start down here and go halfway up. And then I'm just going to slide that up a little bit and finish that last piece. Now the 18 inch is handy, so you don't have to do that slide, especially in some of the patterns where you're using that a lot. But don't feel you have to go buy another tool for one, one piece. All right. I'm going to take one piece off of there, put them aside. Now with this piece, I really do want to, definitely want to glue this. When I open this up, these long pieces that are hanging off your machine, you don't really know what's going on underneath there, and that's where tails get you know moved especially when we're adding spikes so i'm going to press that little wrinkle out first of all it's going to get my iron turned back on for me okay so when i lay that on there again if i lay that up too high i'm not going to have that covered okay so a good rule of thumb, if you get one edge that's just covered and don't drop that too much, then it's a pretty safe bet I'm going to be covered down here. And I have a, I have a couple extra inches there. So I'm going, to, I'm going to even drop that down just a little bit. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can fold this back. I always like to find my setup. And I like to just back that off just a little bit. I find it easier than trying to hold back that long unit. Now, I want to make sure, again, just like the curved paper piecing, I want to stay inside that quarter inch so I don't have to spend time cleaning that glue up. And you don't need a solid line. You don't need much of that glue. Just a little bit, enough to hold that on. Get that lined up right flush on that edge. I'm going to press that down really good. And I'm going to come back to my machine. I'm still at the 1.8. So now I can open that up. And I don't have to worry about that section number two behaving under there for me. All these lines get a little, get a little confusing. So you just always have to refer Line one, you have to follow that all the way out. You can see where line one starts. And I'm still going to start a stitch or two back because that's going to get trimmed off later anyways. And especially because I have to pull that back a little bit because we're going to crisscross that. So I like to do two or three stitches before that so that I'm popping those two or three stitches. They like to come loose when you pull that paper back. So put a couple extra in there so you're loosening those versus your stitches that are actually going into the, uh, the seam.
Let's open that up. Just make sure everything's covered. Looks great. Okay. So that process of gluing to the back side and adding and trimming and then adding your second piece, that's something that you only do on section number one. You're only going to do that, you know, one time. And it tends to be where people get a little hung up because you only do it one time. So if you can remember, I repeat myself, you know, several times, every time you start section one, you're going to be flipping over and gluing to the back side. Now, as we go through the process, when I press this open, that happens naturally through the paper piecing process. So that's why we don't ever have to do it again. So I'm going to take this over to my iron. I'm going to carefully press that open. If you're having problems with that, you can use that uh, precision pen. But to be doing that on every seam through a paper piecing project, you're going to go through a lot of product. And a little bit of steam really gives you a nice, you know, a nice press. Now we can, so we have a little paper hanging off here, but that's okay because that's our next piece that we're going to be adding. Okay. So now the first thing we're going to do after we press, we're going to go back to um, trimming. But first we have to pop that corner a little bit because if I don't, that's going to pull this. So I got to pull that just to line two, just to that intersection. Okay. Pull that back carefully. Now this is where it's just, you repeat the same thing over and over. Press, fold template, fold, add a quarter, and trim. We don't have to shift that this time. All right. Okay, section three. This is our sew side. We're going to line that up. These are pretty, these are great beginner paper piecing because you can see exactly where these are going. I can see that this is going to be completely covered by this unit when I fold that back. So I like that placement. Add a little bit of glue. Doesn't need much. Bring that back over. And take it to the machine. Again, I fold it on the solid line, line two. Now, a lot of people get confused and say, but you're adding section three. But when you're doing, what you have to remember is when you're sewing section one and section two together, your, it's your first stitch line. So when you're adding section three, you're, you're sewing line two. I'm going to start my stitch just a few stitches back. Yes, you're going to cross that first stitch line. Let's open that up. Make sure we have everything covered. Looks beautiful. Let's take that to our ironing station. Press that open. Let me give that just a little bit of a light seam, a steam. Okay, I don't see any paper. Everything's covered. So before I trim this, which I didn't do on this one, I'm going to 
go back to my basting stitch and I'm going to sew all of my TRP lines. Now I'm going to get that really close. Again, you're going to do that about a 2.2 stitch. Now on this one, I have a TRP on both sides. Okay? Doesn't matter which one you sew first. Actually, you have three. You have three on all different edges, all different sides. And you can see the advantage of finishing all of your paper piecing on the unit and then you can sew, because you have three for eight of these units, you could even do all of these at the same time. Instead of changing the machine back and forth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stitch and change my machine, one, my stitch length, one time. And just sew all 24 of those registration points. And I try to remember, as soon as I'm done with my registration points, I try to remember right then to take it back down to 1.8. Because if you start paper piecing with this larger stitch, it's going to make removing papers a lot more difficult. Okay. Let's trim our straight edges. From our smart corners. I have one more smart corner down here. And then my curve. I'm going to do this just by following the line instead of doing the curve so you guys can see it done both ways with the curve ruler. Okay, so we have unit J2 and unit J3. This is where these will be. So what we're going to do now is get our J1 unit. We connect this to one side. Then that gives us a nice straight line, or a nice straight curved line, <laughs> to add that. So let me grab one of my J1 units. which I can easily find since we put it back in our bag. That's another thing. When you finish these, put them back in those units so that when you do go to construct this, you can just find it without even thinking. Like I said, it's all about organization with these quilts to simplify your life. Let me put my extra pieces away in the proper bag. All right. So I'm going to lay this out so you can see how this goes together. So let's find this is a good demo. So this shows this in here shows the steps, but you're also given a graph. Now this came off of one of our um, one of our big sheets when we cut out these these units. This little graph was in there. 
I cut that out and I gave it its own little uh, protector sheet so I know where to find it and it's right at the end where I'm going to need to use it. So it's a perfect place to put that and they, you also have a graph like this on a full sheet that will show you every step of constructing the entire quilt. These are something relatively new in the last couple years that have really been helping CIs and students alike. So you can see we've got the J1 unit, okay? That's all three. This is your first step. This goes to here. And then your next step goes to here, okay? So before we start doing this, look how this is working out. We have those registration points, look, line up perfectly. Now, this is something you're gonna to have to remember. This registration point, people are looking for a registration point. It is going to line up perfectly with that seam, okay? We'll show you that. You want to always make sure what we're gonna do next is we're gonna to have to remove all the paper. But before I remove papers, I always wanna make sure all of my registration points are sewn. So double check everything. It's really easy to miss them. So, and once you take that paper off, it's much more difficult. Okay, so I'm gonna tear the paper off. One thing you wanna be really careful of, that smaller stitch does help, but I'm gonna hold that seam before I start tearing that so I don't pop that seam, okay? I'm gonna hold it again. Now this one, you're gonna have just a little bit of tackiness from where you glued the back of that. And I'm gonna hold on to my registration point too, just to make sure I don't tear that guy off of there, all right? So be careful when you take those off because you don't wanna be popping those seams, adding more stress than you need to. Okay, that's J2. Let's take off J1. I'm gonna hold that, pull that off there. I am going to have a little bit of trimming on this, it looks like. Oh, no, we already did. We're good. These are a little bit harder to take off. And this is where your purple thing can come in handy. You still want to be careful of that seam, but sometimes you can get in there and lift that with that guy. Lift that out of there. And you want to get as much paper off as you can. A lot of people will get their tweezers after every little tiny piece. I think our kind of rule of thumb is if it doesn't crinkle, if you can't hear it within reason, don't worry about those tiny, tiny little pieces. You could spend a year doing that. And a lot of times those tiny pieces Will kind of fall off during the construction process anyways and whatever's left if you're not comfortable with once you construct that i've seen a lot of people construct an entire quilt leaving the papers on and that's really it's really difficult you've got a lot of layers it really affects um, how your um, quilt stitches together it doesn't lay well and these registration points are on here, so we don't have to do that anymore. I had a little difficult time with that guy because I had to stitch it a second time. Sometimes that glue will leave a little residue back there. Don't spend all day on that. Sometimes you'll get a just a real, you know, little film with that. Not a big deal. Okay. So let's hold that seam, get that started, protect that registration point.
now all the seams are off. Just want to be careful of that registration point. Don't want to pull that out when I'm tearing that off. I have another registration point. And my last registration point. All right. Now I'm not having to use a marking pen, try to line up those curves. All the information we need is on there with those beautiful registration points. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, just like our other curved piecing, I've got my frowny face on my base, okay? You want this, you want unit one on the bottom. And I can line this up and see how these line up perfectly. I'm just going to bump that up there. I'm going to use my flower pin. I'm going to put a pin right in that guy. Okay, I can see that I'm pinned right on that registration. Now I'm going to take my glue pen. I'm going to do a little dry run here. And look what happens with this beautiful smart corner. When I bring that around, that lines up perfectly. If it doesn't, you you may have you, you may be off a little on your registration point or you may need to just work it in, okay? But I like to do a little dry run on that. Staying in my seam allowance. I can even add that corner first and then just line that up to match my pin. Now I can take my pin out and I can do the same exact process with this and look, that smart corner lines perfectly up. Now we don't have to guess at this you know, how much dog ear do I leave off? We don't have to mark our quarter inch intersections anymore. Those, those smart corners have made everybody's life easier and our quilts prettier. Look at that. All right. Now I can't go any further. I would typically do all eight of attaching section one to section two. Okay. And this is where we have to use good old quilting talent and our quarter inch foot. Now I'm going to use my um, little purple thing because I am curve piecing and I want to manage this fullness here. Another little trick, which I don't see, I've got that lined up. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull those registration points now because it's really easy to pull those out before you stitch them. All right. Make sure my stitch length is correct, so I'm going to stitch a little bit, and I'm going to manage my fullness of my curve. I'm going to stitch a little, manage that fullness back here. You know, if you have problems with curved piecing, it's always this tail end back here where we get a lot of fullness. So the more you work in, in the early parts, the less chance you have of pleating I didn't quite get enough glue on there if I glued that a little bit better it would have been easier I'm going to drop my foot. I'm going to 
make sure that I come right off at that point because that's where that's where you want to come off is right at that point. All right. Now when I open that up because of the smart corners, look. That is a perfectly straight line. And look at that perfectly even. You know, this would be very difficult any other way to trim this piece perfectly, but with that technique, that just all fits in there beautifully. Now the next important part to this graph is which way your seam is going to get pressed, okay? So our arrow is pointing this way. The little stitch line is referencing where your quarter inch is going to remain. So it naturally wants to do this, but don't assume that. That really makes a big difference in the, in the construction later on. Take that. Make sure that seam's pressed open. I am going to use a little steam on that. And I have no paper back there, so I don't have to worry about distorting. All right. Now we have a nice smooth line here that this is going to attach to. Okay. Now it looks a little funny here, but what we line this up with is this seam line. Okay. So I'm going to put a pin right in there, right on that seam line. And I need to turn that a little bit. So these are kind of an intersecting, like a quarter inch intersection, it looks like. Yeah. So if you find your quarter inch on this, and your quarter inch on this piece, put that pin in there. Okay. I'm going to pinch that so that doesn't move. Now when I line this up, your smart corner perfectly lines up. Now this is a real subtle curve up here, but it's still a curve. Use a little bit of glue. Get that smart corner in there first. Line that up. Take my pin out. Make sure this lines up perfectly. Beautiful. You want a pretty solid line of glue. Just keep it in that quarter inch. work this a little bit, but then I'm going to line that up. Feed that in. Get a nice flat. Now this is where I like to get a little bit more glue than I did on that last piece. Really pin that guy down make it behave. All right. So starting on this, we're going to use a little piece of paper here. We're going to use a leader, just like we often do with, with, um, with fabric. But because we're paper piecers, we have all kinds of scrap paper. Okay, so I'm going to start that, and then I'm not going to have issues with that point, sucking that point up. Line that with that a little bit. Okay, 
there we go. I'm going to grab my purple thing with this curve. I want to watch my edge, watch my quarter inch. And I want to keep feeding that, uh, that fullness in as I go. So I'm going to stitch a little. I'm going to work that in, stitch a little, work that in. See how that, uh, that tip of that um, purple thing is nice and flat, just fits right in there. I can do it as I go. always kind of working that fabric. Also, I'm going to pull out my registration points before I stitch over them. You don't have to do this. This is just something I found. Makes it easier. I don't have one on the bottom because remember we used the seam, the seam for that one. our little leader off. Save that for the next one. Now because we did that registration point, when I press this open, this is going to line up beautifully. Let me get that pressed. So we want to make sure we're pressing the right direction. This is the line you have to be aware of when you're sewing these. And I can press that, I think, a little bit better. It might just be a little half a stitch. You might even want to adjust that with that thickness. But that's the importance of that registration point, is to make this line continuous. It looks like one piece when actually that's where that seam goes through. So there is your J unit.